Welcome back. Here's a nice game maker how to learn how to make a switch or a lever control another object. You'll see here I'm going to have this switch and when I hit it I can turn it on and off and when I turn it on and off it's going to turn this ghost on. So the ghost goes up, the ghost goes down and when I turn the switch off the ghost will be stopped. Let's get to it. First of all I just want to show you in my ghost object here when it's created I just have speed zero, direction zero, so it's not moving. Now I'm going to go right in. I'm going to try to code all of this into the switch. So let's go to the switch. And uh, you'll see here I have two sprites that I'm going to use, switch on and switch off. And let's just put a little code for when our switch is first made in the game. So let's go to the create event. And when the switch is created, I'm just going to say that the sprite index is switch off. Now that's good for remembering that the switch is off. Um, I'm actually going to use this as a variable because this is a nice easy way to know whether my switch is on or off is I can just actually check the sprite index and ask is it off or is it sprite switch on. So at least I have a way of knowing that the switch is off and it looks like it's off. Now, the next thing that's going to happen is the player is going to run into the switch. So, add event, collision with player. Now, I'm just going to warn you that there is going to be a little complication coding this, but we will fix it. But let's just go with what a beginner might do here. I've hit the player. So, I want the switch to change whatever state it's in. So, I'm going to ask a quick question here to find out, is my switch on or is my switch currently off? Now, I didn't make any other variables, but I'm just going to use that sprite index variable. Okay, might be a little bit of a sloppy way, but it definitely works, and the variable's there, and it's either on or off. So let me ask if the switch is currently has a sprite switch off. If it currently has the sprite switch off, then I'm going to go sprite index equals s, bad spelling on these. I'm going to turn it on, and I also want to do whatever I want to do with my object that I'm trying to control. Now, that object I'm trying to control, there's only one of them. It was called O-Ghost. So what I can do here is I can actually just tell it to start moving. So with O-Ghost, speed equals 4. And let's give it a direction, too. Direction is 90. Now, that ghost is coded to bounce off the walls and keep bouncing around, right? So that'll just keep bouncing and bouncing. Now that's really it for switch off, turns to on, and controls the ghost. Keep in mind our sprite index is now on, so that's an easy one to check. Here I can just ask my else question, and the else here is pretty simple because if the switch wasn't in the off position, I know it must have been in the on position. So I don't have to ask, you know, the other if there, right? It was one or the other. So I know if it was in the on position, then I should change my sprite to switch off. And with O ghost, speed is zero. I can leave the direction the same. Actually, you know what might be better here? I know this is a little bit of a detour. I'm actually going to take that direction out of there so it's just the speed I'm turning on and I'll quickly just pop to the ghost and when they were created I'll just give them a direction of 90. This way when my switch is hit my ghost doesn't change the direction they were going they'll maintain the same direction right all I'm doing is really getting the speed to start and stop okay which is probably better. Now does it work? Probably. Let's check it out in a run and be prepared to see something weird happen. So one thing we've done here is our collision has been very basic, right? We've said when I touch, turn it on. When I touch, turn it off. But that's working fine. But you'll see the problem here is if the player moves on top of the switch like this, the switch starts to have a bit of a spaz. And what's happening here 
is the player's constantly in collision. And since it's constantly in collision, it's constantly running these if and else statements. And it's going really quickly from switch on to switch off, switch off to switch on, switch on to switch off. And that's just happening 30 times a second, right? So you'll see the switch is spazzing out. Now there's lots of ways to fix this. I'm going to give you one way, okay, that's a pretty solid way, but it's going to require that the player move off of the switch in order for the switch to be switchable again. Um, it's one way, you may learn a little something from it. We'll use a command that involves checking for collisions from the switch. So let's see what this method involves. Now, the system we're going to do is this. We're going to actually have to require that the player moves off of the switch in order for that switch to become active again and available to turn on or off. Now, to do this, it involves another variable because this is something else we want to know about the switch. The switch has to be either in a state of, yes, it's active, or the switch is inactive until the player moves off it. So let's take care of this. Let's go back to the switch's creation code. Now I know it's off. I'm going to add another variable, active or inactive. And I'm going to set it to 1, because 1 is active, 0, inactive. And we want our switch to start active. Now, how is this going to play into the rest of our code? Well, let's pop over to our hits player code. When we hit the player this time, when I asked if the switch was off, turn it on, there's one more question I have to ask here. I have to say and if my active variable is 1. Right? And the same thing here. Now I'm actually going to ask the full question here. If sprite index equals switch on and active equals 1, then I can turn it off. So see, there's two conditions. Active equals 1. That's the main condition, right? We have to be active. Then we can switch to the appropriate sprite and turn the ghost on. Here for active and I'm on, I switch to off and the ghost turns off. Now there has to be more. Active is one, I have to switch active to zero at some point. And that, of course, is gonna be right here. I just got touched by the player, that sounds bad, but active goes to zero. And then here, I was just collided with the player, active goes to zero, and I turn the thing off. Now because I've switched to zero here, if the player just stands on top of me, the next time this collision takes place in the very next step, I may be off, but I will not have active 1. My active is still at 0. So the switch won't work again. So if we actually give this a little run now, we should see our switch working one time only. And even though I'm standing on it, I'm not getting the weirdness. Now the problem is, is that switch has its active variable set to zero, I need that active variable to set back to one. How am I gonna do that? You really have two choices you could do here. There's an easy method, and there's a easy method as well that probably uses a method that you don't know how to do. Here's the easy method. You could do this. You could use an alarm, and I'll just show you this one, and I could maybe set the alarm to two seconds, so alarm 60. Sorry, alarm 0 is 60. When this alarm goes off in 60 steps, add event, alarm 0, I can switch the active variable back to 1. What this basically does is just has a 2 second delay before the switch can be run again. So if I give this one a go, you'll see that when I hit the switch, active 0, turn that alarm on, and in 60 steps, the switch will become active again. So if you don't mind this way, the player can actually just stand there. But every two seconds, the switch becomes active again, and it can turn on. Now personally, not bad, but I'd rather have it that the player has to move off and touch it again. 
That way it's much more definitive, right, that they want to flip the switch. So I'm going to show you that method. So I'm going to take this alarm method out. And let's make it so the player has to move off of the switch. Now, to make it so the player has to move off of the switch, I'm going to use the step event. And I'm just going to ask the question constantly, if the player is not on top of me, turn myself active. So here we go. If instance place x comma y comma o player is bigger than zero active equals one now if you haven't used this method before it's actually uh, a whole bunch of methods that are used like this this basically checks for a collision uh, the short version is is it says to the lever if the lever was placed at x and y and it's already at its own x and y right that is where it is so if the lever was placed at its own x and y which is where it is, would it be in contact with the player? And if it is, send back the ID number of the player. Now, the greater than zero is because the ID of the player will be something like a million fifty-seven or one million two hundred thirty-eight. It'll be a number bigger than zero if there's a player there. If there's no player in contact at that location with the lever, then this will actually send back something like negative four, which is not bigger than zero. And so this is nice. Basically, whoops, I have this backwards. I should be saying if this is less than zero, otherwise there's no player, then the active gets turned to one. Oh, almost a major error there. So again, if there was a player there at the X and Y, the lever, the number sent back is big. It's a big ID. If it's less than zero, it's because there's no player there, and I can turn back to active state. Let's see if this works and see if I was right in my uh, bigger or greater than zero stuff there. I go on, I go off, I go on, I go off. You can see just staying there does nothing. I have to go on and off to flick the switch. That wasn't that bad, right? Those two little lines of code. And again, this is just asked in the step event, right? Constantly being asked, right, to turn me active. Perfect. Hope you enjoyed that one. Now you can add a bunch of uh, switches and levers, make doors open and things move and stuff happen in your game. Thanks for watching. See you in the next vid.